Ah, the Statue of Liberty out there in Times Square. This is clear cut. I'm Michelle McCory. A federal judge in Virginia has blocked an enforcement of President Donald Trump's temporary travel ban. President Trump's lawyers argued that his executive order was necessary to protect the U.S. from terrorist attacks carried out by people from the seven mostly Muslim countries. But the judge issued a preliminary injunction against the ban, saying the administration's lawyers provided no evidence supporting that. And I want to talk more about this with a longtime Trump supporter, Pastor Daryl Scott. He's the CEO of the National Diversity Coalition for Trump and also senior pastor and co-founder of Cleveland's New Spirit Revival Center. Pastor, so good to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me in this uh, American Introductory Week. I consider it an honor and a privilege to be here. Well, thank you very much. Now, Pastor, you were on the president's transition team. Uh, you met with him very recently. So I want to get your thoughts on the travel suspension, as we said, a U.S. district judge in Virginia, ruling that President Trump's executive order suspending entry from seven countries is unconstitutional. She's saying it's a Muslim ban and that is religious bias is what is, the, is, is at the heart of all of this. You're a religious leader. Do you think religious bias is at the heart of this? No, I don't. Actually, I think political bias is at the heart of her uh, injunction against him. You know, once again, it was a temporary suspension. It's something that Mr. Trump announced during his campaign that he would put a moratorium on immigration pending an upgrade in the vetting process. I mean, he said he would do it, and he set out to do it, and they're taking something that is meant to help uh, ensure national security, and they're politicizing it, and they're buying into this narrative of racism and xenophobia. And the thing is, there's no such thing as collateral damage in regard to American lives. No American life is um, uh, uh, disposable. And so in guaranteeing the safety of American lives, sometimes we have to resort to extreme measures because these are extreme times that we live in. So I see nothing wrong with it. I don't see it as being a uh, Muslim ban. I don't see it as being religious, simply because of the fact that there are a number of predominantly Islamic countries that are not being uh, 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 refused entry into the United States at this time. These are countries that the Obama administration identified as being terrorist threats or being the highest level of terrorist threats, and he's simply trying to guarantee national security. But I think all of these judges are playing and buying into a political and a media narrative against Mr. Trump. Well, I want to get your perspective on, on something else. Being a religious leader, the issue of Jerusalem, a city with major importance for many religions. Of course, we've got uh, the president scheduled to meet with the prime minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. Do you think the Trump administration should move the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem? And if so, why? Well, speaking as a private citizen and as a spiritual leader of Christians, yes, I do. Jerusalem has historically been the, uh, I mean, Tel Aviv is the capital of Israel, but I really believe in the eyes of God, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, and Jerusalem has always been uh, in the heart of God, and it's a place of special significance, and I can think of no better place than Jerusalem uh, for symbolic purposes and also for political purposes to be the, the capital and to be the uh, location of the U.S. Embassy. I'm completely behind that idea, 100 percent. And I hope Mr. Trump does move the embassy to Jerusalem. Well, back home, uh, let's focus on an issue that's close to your heart. The president has highlighted Chicago and the violence over there, saying that it is totally out of control. Now, you two are working on a way to address that. Let's talk about it. Well, yes, we are. We're going to address it. Uh, Mr. Trump has specific ideas on how he's going to address it, but I've already begun some preliminary contacts with people in Chicago. However, I've not contact or I've not been in contact with the political leaders. I've been in contact with the guys on the street, street leaders, guys that came out of that culture of violence and that came out of that culture of um, uh, a crime. And they have since reformed their lives, and now they're activists in the community trying to work against that very system that they were once a part of. And so they contacted me, and we have some very uh, significant initiatives that we are going to be engaged in, some very significant endeavors that we believe can reduce the violence, reduce the crime, and begin to affect positive change. We're going to do some, uh, some business initiatives as well as some... Uh, uh, land um, development and some housing 
and some economic initiatives, we're going to try to address it as, 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 as apolitical as possible. And why do you think that President Trump may have success with this regard when the previous administration didn't? It doesn't seem to me as if the previous administration made Chicago uh, a primary target of theirs. It seems as if Chicago was almost ignored by the previous administration, and that was remarkable in light of the fact that he had a history there. But it was something they didn't want to talk about, something it seems as if they thought if they closed their eyes, it would go away. Just the other day, uh, an 11-year-old girl was sitting in a car, and she was shot in the head uh, by, by a random bullet. And so, it, regarding Chicago, we need to be proactive rather than reactive. We can't keep waiting for another horrible incident before we uh, address it. We want to be proactive. And the thing is, let me tell you this, the citizens of Chicago, even the guys that are on the street, they're not a bunch of animals that are just going around shooting and killing anything that walks. These are American citizens that want the American dream. They want life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. They want nice things and prosperity. They want, they have the same goals, but they have different methods of obtaining them simply because they've been disenfranchised. All right. Thank you so much, Pastor Darrell Scott. Thanks for joining us. Well, illegal.